quick uh, video on sort of how the board comes up and free Artos starts. Uh, you can probably skip this one if you're more interested in just getting started, but yeah, this could be interesting if something's not working on your board or something like that. So uh, out of reset, um, if you look in this startup file here, there's a reset handler. So this is um, the first thing that's called out of reset. I think it's actually, um, if you look above us here, there's a uh, there's a uh, pointer table which is actually a whole heap of um, is when you see this uh, attribute section here it means it's used as the uh, it's placed in, in RAM or flash as the uh, interrupt vector table so it looks like uh, this reset one is the one that it calls immediately after startup I don't, I'm not sure exactly what address it gets placed at maybe at zero I can't remember but um, the important bit is yeah, the reset handler it's called so if we just have a quick look at the reset handler um, just a minute. I'm not sure what this one does. Oh yeah, it's uh, setting up some clocks and things like that. Yeah, I didn't obviously didn't write this code, so I've just had a quick look at it. Um, from there, we're uh, you know zeroing out some RAM, RAM segments, and uh, then we call main. So yeah, it's not, not too tricky. Uh, if you haven't used Eclipse before, um, by default. If you hold down the control key while you wave your button, uh, your mouse over um, pretty much anything, then uh, if it highlights like that, you can click on it and it'll go to the definition. So that can be pretty useful for navigating around the source code. So now we're in the main. This is, um, uh, yeah, where things get more interesting, I guess. Um, first thing is more uh, initialization code. I, I inherited, uh, you know, I, I grabbed the free RTS, RTOS port for the STM32 from somewhere, so um, I think this was already in the example main, so I've just kept it. It, it you know, does some more important setup. I haven't uh, haven't really had a look into it. it enables some uh, peripherals and things like that. Um, so yeah, top of main, that's what that does. Now this USART in it is something that I did set up. This, um, along with um, this STF syscalls minimal, enables printf uh, output. So I think this sets up one of the, uh, the, U uh, the UARTs on the, uh, on the board and um, we just have a pretty simple get and put um, driver here with no driver queues. So that's, that's kind of useful um, in these sort of debugging situations. What it means is when you do a printf, the printf will block until all of the output has been sent. Whereas some serial drivers will just queue it and uh, it'll send as it can, um, which means that if you're in a situation where there's some code causing a crash, um, y you can end up with a board resetting before, you know, the line saying, hey, you know, this is why has made it out. So one thing to keep in mind is um, printf will slow down your code um, quite a lot because it'll actually wait for all the characters to be transmitted. Anyway, back to this uh, minimal syscalls file, this basically hooks the low level underneath uh, newlib. So newlib contains um, printf, and printf will eventually click, uh, call this right, and we'll just put it out over that uh, serial port. Okay, so that's that. Um, LCD in it, uh, probably something to come back to. Um, also, the menu system will come. I'll probably cover in a different video, but uh, this bit's a bit more interesting. We've got a x task create, which is the first uh, free RTOS based uh, method we call. Um, it's obviously creating a free RTOS task and in this case it's the touch task so it's uh, essentially running the touch driver and the the touch device is on the spy bus and I think I grabbed this code from somewhere else and I think it's just bit banging uh, over one port um, bit banging spy uh, it only you know, grabs a couple of integers from this uh, device, so it's, it's pretty simple stuff. Um, the more interesting part is, well, maybe I'll just walk through the parameters on this task create. So this first one is you know, the, the method that it's going to call once the, the, the task starts. So as you can see, it's got some initialization and it loops forever and uh, you know, it reads, reads from the device. Um, you give it a task name. There's, there's a free, free RTOS API to list list the running tasks and that's probably what comes out at some point so not too critical but useful at some point this is the bit that's interesting there's a uh, stack size you need to give to the task 
Now in this case, you'd think the touch task and a touch driver probably doesn't need that much stack, but that's not true because the touch task actually, once it reads the values, it sends them off or it calls methods in the menuing system, and then the menuing system typically calls your callbacks in your code, so your code will actually be running in the context of this task, so um, you need to size the stack appropriately. So if you have, if, if you like to have big local variables in methods, you know, on the stack, then you need probably to turn this uh, stack size up a little bit. Um, priority. Um, as you, you know, add more tasks or doing sort of more mission critical stuff, you probably want that stuff more or higher priority than, uh, you know, the UI and the touch tasks. So just keep that in mind if you're doing some sort of, you know, real world motor control or heat control or something like that. Run those tasks at a higher priority. Um, you get given back a task handle, so you can, you know, control the task, shut the task down at some later point. I don't think I use it, but yeah, it's, it's put in there. I've left this example in, it's commented out, you know, normally this, this demo actually doesn't do anything, but normally you'd have some other tasks that do something more interesting. Um, in a previous application I had uh, keg weighing tasks that uh, ran the ADC and uh, weighed some kegs. So, yeah, I just left, in, left this in as an example. And uh, here's, here's sort of the main entry point to free Artos. Um, you start the scheduler, the scheduler loops forever. And uh, hopefully this printf should never be reached because that means that our free Artos has crashed or failed or whatever. But um, yeah, probably should go and check out how the documentation on the free Artos website is pretty cool but, um, and, and good, but uh, you can read the scheduler code as well. We've got it all. But uh, basically it'll... Um, Every uh, few milliseconds, it'll get an interrupt from the uh, from the, uh, the the, chi the timer on the chip, and it'll look at all the tasks and see which one's um, ready to run or has uh, had enough time and should not be run anymore, and um, choose a task to run. So yeah, preemptive uh, real-time scheduler. So the other thing to look at is uh, go back to our LCD init, and uh, this kind of ties into the task stuff we've been talking about. So one problem I noticed, uh, which you won't get with an Arduino or a lot of other sort of environments, is once you move to this uh, preemptive uh, multitasking OS, you can end up with multiple tasks trying to write to the screen at the same time. Now the the LCD kind of takes a bit of a command stream. So if one task is in the middle of writing something to the screen and then the scheduler runs and decides it's had enough CPU time and it's time for another task to run, and that task resumes whatever it was doing and tries to write to the screen then you know the screen can come become corrupted and the LCD driver can become very confused so you need a way to make sure that doesn't happen and uh, one way to do that is to just disable uh, multitasking uh, whenever you are in the LCD um, that's what uh, some IO routines pretty commonly do on these uh, RTOSs but I took a different approach and use a semaphore here and um, I think yeah the uh, the way that it works um, or it works it seems to work pretty well but uh, I think the uh, the blocking task will inherit the priority as well um, so you know if, if if a task goes to, tries to go to sleep while it's writing to the LCD then it'll actually get a priority boost and, and be allowed to complete so that works pretty well um, now these SDM devices have this pretty cool, um, I don't know, module that allows them to talk to external RAM. So that's what we use. I think it's called FSM. I can't remember what it stands for, but you know, you set up some registers. It allows you to basically treat the LCD RAM as local RAM, and it sorts out sort of all the bus operations for you. So that's pretty cool. Um, one thing to be aware of with these cheap boards is a lot of the, you know there's, there's a handful of different LCD sizes and types and things like that and um, various driver chips. They're all pretty similar, but just the, uh, the register layouts can be a little bit different and the values that they expect. Um, one thing that's pretty common is that they all um, have in register zero their chip ID. So if you read that, you get a value and then you can go to Google with that and um, a lot of the time you can't actually see the chip because it's under the LCD or something, so you grab that device ID and you go on Google and, you know, you, a lot of times you can find some some free or some Chinese driver code and uh, that can really help you bring up because 
Um, as we'll see, it's mostly just a bunch of magic values poked into registers, and you can, you know, divine all these from the from the um, from the device sheet if you if you like. But you know, I, I think I just grabbed these out of someone else's code and, and tweaked the ones that I needed to. Um, yeah, so that's the uh, that's the LCD initialization. Maybe we'll just go and have a quick look at um, the the actual API. So I've got a a thread safe API which uses that locking that I was talking about earlier. But yeah, there's some methods to put text on the screen. Text displaying text is actually probably the slowest operation. The fills and stuff um, pretty fast. And um, yeah, probably the two most common ones for sort of menus and stuff is you know fill a rectangle. X, Y coordinates and width and height and, and the color value and um, LCD printf so this is pretty heavily used in my code you give it a, a column and a row not an X and a Y so this basically takes into account the font metrics and um, you know you, you pass in the standard printf format string so um, yeah that's it's pretty easy to get stuff on the screen using that clear the whole screen yeah not really much to the LCD API um, yeah, the other thing that's in here is the, the actual uh, font glyphs, font uh, images, so if you want to have a bigger font or replace a font or whatever, you need to uh, generate this. Uh, I can't remember, Robert, I can't remember if I generated this or got it from somewhere, but yeah, one thing to keep in mind if you want to modify how the system looks. Um, yeah, I think that pretty much bring, uh, covers the board, um, bring up an initialization and how free RTOS, free RTOS um, kind of works. Um, I think I'll leave the menu system to another video.